Yugi Bros! Holy crap, a duel without moth? Are you serious, Yugi Bros? It's been so long. What's up, guys? Welcome to another duel video featuring yours truly uh, playing uh, a deck that uh, is playing a Jinzo against a deck that is not playing Moth. Can you believe it? We're gonna go into this real quick. Uh, showcase exactly what we're playing here. It's interesting. Don't, 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 don't fret, don't fret. I know you see the Weevil skill, but guess what? It's Hidden Parasite. It's not, it's, don't worry, it's not Cocoon. I know, all I've seen is flashbacks of moths and cocoons! Yes, we're playing Hidden Parasite, the skill that says once per turn you can change all monsters on the field into insects until the end of the turn. Also, any battle damage your opponent takes is halved for the rest of the turn. You may use this skill up to twice per duel. Uh, in this, we are playing a somewhat of a magician. It's more like a spellcaster deck. Uh, a lot of the spellcasters in this deck can be set, so you can activate this, uh, destroy all face-up monsters on the field. Uh, and not have to worry about your face downs getting destroyed. But also this deck is very, very slow. It builds up its defenses. And what better way to then crash our opponent's defenses after we've built ours up than dropping a Jinzo and rendering half of their deck useless. We're playing against Twisted Personality Gravekeepers, the Gravekeeper deck of choice as of late, where they've replaced the Ambushers with Curses to give this more counters. This is the skill that says every time a player loses life, you put a counter on this max three, and then once during your main phase, you can activate one of the two skills, which is either remove two counters to discard a random card from the opponent's hand, and remove three counters to then destroy a face-up card your opponent controls. Uh, this right here is the only real big out they have to our Jinzo outside of Oracle, or dropping a Lava Golem on us if we have two monsters on the field. Uh, so we can prevent two of the three things from happening if we just make sure their monsters don't stay on the field and they don't have a Gravekeeper to tribute for Oracle, but this is kind of inevitable. Uh, it's just something we're going to have to deal with. Uh, so they elected to go first. They're going to do the standard set recruiter, set two traps, and pass. We're going to draw into Apprentice Magician. We're going to set Apprentice. We're going to set Offerings and Twister and pass. They're going to draw into Recruiter. The normal curse hit us for 500, giving them a counter. Flipping their Recruiter and re having Recruiter swing in here. It's Apprentice. They probably thought we were playing Moth based on our skill. Apprentice gets another Apprentice and sets it face down. They're going to attack it though anyway, which is smart because this card says if it's summoned, doesn't matter how, uh, you can target a face up card on the field and place a spell counter that you can place a spell counter on. And if we had this face down and were able to flip it the following turn, we could arguably put a spell counter on something. Um, obviously, we don't have anything to do that for, but I get what they were going for there. So they're going to pass. We draw into the man, the myth, the legend, the machine, the Jinzo. And we drop that on the field, and at this point they're probably like, Alright, I don't think they're playing Moth anymore. I mean, this probably should have ticked them off, but you know, whatever. So instantly, the Rite of Spirit, well, this was dead anyway, but their Nightmare Wheel is dead. We're going to have Jinzo swing over their Curse. They're going to take 1,600 gloriously to the face, which does unfortunately put a counter on this, but as long as we don't get them to three counters, we are okay. And it's their turn. They draw into Wheel, which right now is dead. They're going to set a Recruiter. They're going to go into Battle Phase, have their Recruiter swing into Jinzo. This would put the third counter on this that put them down to 1,200. Uh, we try to prevent that with Offerings to the Doomed, however, thinking about back, I probably should have let that go, because it's not like they could have uh, used the skill in the main phase 2, since there is no main phase 2 here. Uh, and they get Curse out of this anyway, so now they have a guarantee way to get this to 3 counters. Uh, I probably should have just let it go, because if I had let it go, uh, they'd be down to 1,200. And then I could summon this Legion to the field, assuming this doesn't float, which it doesn't, have Jinzo swing over this and have Legion swing directly for what would be would have been game. Uh, unfortunately, that's not the case, and we don't draw, which is even worse because of offerings. So we summon Legion here. Uh, we definitely had game, but we botched that up, so let's see if we can steal the game anyway. This time they'll have Recruiter Search Oracle, and then we'll have Legion swing in for 13, putting them down to 11, and they will pass. And we will pass. They'll draw into Rite of Spirit. They're going to use the skill uh, that they now had three counters because of Legion's uh, attack directly to pop our Jinzo. They then will activate their Rite of Spirit, bringing back Curse, doing another 500 us and putting a counter back on their skill. 
then they will tribute it for Oracle. Oracle will drop our monster by 2,000 attack. They'll set their two traps that are now live, and they'll swing for a 2,000 punch to the face. Legion's effect gets us a rogue doll, but not much we can do with that. Uh, and they force the pass to us. We finally get to draw. We get an apprentice magician. They activate Rite of Spirit in the draw phase. Smart. They don't want us dropping any sneaky Jinzos. Granted, we have no monsters to drop, but I guess they're just being cautious here. They're going to put us down to 500. That actually makes both of one of their two Nightmare Wheels live to just make game out of us real quick. We do then flip the Hidden Parasite and then activate Eradicating Aerosol. So then we summon the Rogue Doll, and even though this won't be game because we'd only be doing half the damage due to our skill's effect, this would put them down to 300, however they flip the Nightmare Wheel, and that unfortunately will result in game for them in the standby phase. Twister we had, but we only had 500 life, so we couldn't out it, but of course, so we show it to them, and then they uh, sneakily show us the other Nightmare Wheel, so it, did, it didn't actually make a difference. Uh, so unfortunate, because we could have had the game. We could have had game one real easily. Uh, as I had shown you earlier, but uh, we got a little careless and we botched it up. So going into game two, let's see if we can fix ourselves here. We open Apprentice and Offerings in Pass. Our opponent draws into Zoma, has a Rite of Spirit, Nightmare Wheel, Dust Tornado, and Curse. Uh, act, summons their Curse, doing 500, putting the skill on their card. They'll set three cards here, one of which is a Dust Tornado they can activate immediately if they're worried about a Jinzo. They're going to swing into our monster. Our monster has 800 defense though, so nothing happens in the draw phase because they now know and are aware that we are playing Jinzo as if the sleeves didn't tip them off already. Uh, they, uh, they'll they flip Dust Tornado on our face down. We'll chain it. It's a little risky on our part, but if we can get that off the field and do as max amount uh, a maximum amount of damage with Jinzo as possible, maybe we can steal this game. Uh, we also have Allure of Darkness, so we're not screwed on drawing. We're going to then activate Allure of Darkness, draw two, which is Dark Red Enchanter and another Apprentice. Apprentice seems the most likely candidate to just bite the dust here. Then we'll tribute our Apprentice, summoning the Jinzo, and have Jinzo swing in directly. Uh, these Nightmare Wheel and Zomas are now dead, and they will take the full 24 to the face. They draw into Lava Golem, which is not going to help them right now since we don't have two monsters. They set a card, making it... A, making it interestingly seem like they have something because then they burn the skill here uh, and hit a card in our hand which is interesting because it almost made me believe they had an option maybe it was an offerings to the doom they sided in we don't draw so we are just forced to swing in directly and attack uh, but to no regard it doesn't matter they actually just bluffed us out so good thing we swung uh, so going into game three this deck is real strong anything with Jinzo uh, in the mix is really strong if you can just drop it uh, early while your opponent doesn't have something like an offering to the doom to stop you or parasite paranoid in moth's case uh, but you know it is what it is gravekeepers here start out with recruiter nightmare wheel dust tornado and dust tornado so pretty strong opening considering the fact that two of these traps they'll probably use on our back row we're gonna start with an allure here we draw an eradicating aerosol and twister I uh, will banish our Dark Red Enchanter, set Twister and Offerings, go into Pass, and then of course they'll flip Dust Tornado number one and Dust Tornado number two. They might as well get rid of those as fast as possible because of the Jinzo. They actually even flipped a Nightmare Wheel here on our defense uh, because they, they assume it'll get negated after a turn or two, and they assume this is probably Apprentice Magician as the last two games have gone. It's actually old Vindictive, uh, but you know. Makes sense that they're uh, playing it safe here, flipping the wheel, getting the counter off of that, gonna flip Recruiter. They're gonna put Wonder Wand on Recruiter, send Recruiter, draw two, and then they will add Recruiter from their deck to their hand. Uh, and then they will normal Recruiter, set the two traps, go into battle phase and swing into what I assume they thought was a Apprentice. It's actually Old Vindictive. We'll have Old Vindictive pop the recruiter so they'll search another recruiter but that does leave us on no monsters to tribute for Jinzo we draw into apprentice magician we'll set that and pass we could have attacked uh, but giving them more ways to get rid of our monster especially if it's offerings to doom they have face down I didn't want to take that chance so we'll set it here and see what happens in the end phase they'll flip Zoma and nightmare wheel so nightmare wheel will do another 500 to us giving them a second counter and they'll put another recruiter on the field and a wonder wand on that and they will draw two 
they draw into both Curse and Lava Golem, and they search Curse with Recruiter's Effect. Uh, all three Recruiters are gone, so nothing else to search there except Oracle, but they might as well take it the safe route, which continues to give them counters. They switch Zoma to attack mode here. They'll go into battle phase and have Zoma swing. Uh, and our apprentice this time will die and will set an old vindictive and we'll, they will pass. We draw into offerings to the doomed, we'll flip old vindictive, popping the Zoma, tributing it for Jinzo. Even though they don't have traps, who cares? We have a free range for an attack here. And even though uh, we could pass because we want to dodge uh, this thing popping it, we know they have a curse based off the recruiter search. So we might as well just go in for the 24 before Jinzo bites the dust putting them down to 1600. They draw into a third curse, unfortunate for them. They'll summon it, putting a third counter on their skill, putting us at 25 and popping our Jinzo. Uh, but unfortunately they can't set anything to wall here, so they will hit us for 800, we'll take it, we don't need the offerings, we need to draw a good card here, so we'll, we'll gladly go with that. We draw into Rogue Doll. Interesting draw because we actually have a face down offerings to the doom which will pop curse here and barring they don't have a sphere curry bow or gentlemander we will swing and that is actually game so we take game three off the top decked road rogue doll which is pretty inconvenient in our part um it's tough to say uh it's it's a little unfortunate because they didn't draw traps so like i'm sure if they had the trap cards they would have been able to play around this a lot easier and this wouldn't have just given us the free win uh, that it did but like i said we were supposed to win game one so it ends up working out for us in the long run and we win the match the gravekeeper deck played one lava golem one gravekeeper's oracle three recruiter three curse two wonder wand three right of spirit three zoma the spirit uh, three Nightmare Wheel and three Dust Tornado. The side deck consisted of Golden Ladybug, two Sphere Curry, but one Warrior Elimination and two Twister. The build that they played actually didn't play Offerings of the Doom. I'd probably add that in the future, uh, especially now that Jinzo's a thing. But for the deck that everyone I assume cares about, the deck I dubbed Jinzo Apprentice plays one Rogue Doll, three Jinzo, two Dark Red Enchanter, Triple Legion the Fiend Jester, Triple Apprentice Magician, one Old Vindictive Magician, one Magical Undertaker, Triple Allure of Darkness, two Eradicating Aerosol, three Offerings of the Doomed, and three Twister. Uh, this is obviously for the Legion effect, so this is the main part of the deck, so we play three, knocking this down to two, but we do side the third in case we want to turn this more into a hand destruction deck. Uh, this is just a really good card to thin your deck and also... Uh, get another tribute summon out on the field. However, because it's not the main focus of the deck We could probably cut this in the future. It was an easy side out uh, going into game two and three. This is the bane of the entire deck uh, Floating with apprentice magician and then into one of the two cards You can summon him with it being either undertaker to then flip some in the following turn and summon another uh, monster or kind of just loops if they have multiple attacks uh, if they can swing into swing into swing into this can summon this and then this can bring back something in the standby Or I'm sorry in the main phase and you contribute that for the Jinzo as opposed to the Undertaker It's just an extra card, but also this is good to just spot removal things off the fly uh, Everything except rogue doll in this deck is dark. So we max out the allures uh, I figured this deck wouldn't play traps based off the Jinzo and every time I play one of these types of decks in the past It didn't play many traps so since this takes care of the traps, I figured we'd max out on the ways to destroy. That being through Twister Offerings of the Doomed and our two Dark Holes and Eradicating Aerosol. Uh, the side deck, like I said, had the third, eradic or the third Enchanter, a DD Crow for specific matchups. We actually sided this into the Gravekeeper matchup, but we never drew it uh, for all those Rite of Spirit plays. Uh, two other Old Vindictives. I kind of wanted to base it off like playing Moth with Triple Nidoria, but Triple Old Vindictive instead, in case we really needed it. I think game two and three, you saw we played uh, two of these. Uh, copycat for the offset chance, we need this. I'm not really sure what we needed against, except Moth to make a 3500 beat stick. Uh, but you can summon it through this, which is cool. And then the Warrior Elimination, of course. But what did you guys think? Please leave your comments down below. Like, subscribe as always. Click that notification bell to get all of our latest updates. Uh, do you guys want more Jinzo this week? I was actually thinking of doing some of my own videos. Uh, a few prediction videos for what we should see in the speed box. As well as some other cute little things I wanted to drop on the channel. Uh, but I definitely do want to keep bringing the dual videos as well. So uh, be looking forward to a mishmash of stuff in the future. As always though guys, my name is Yuki Bros, and I'm out. Take care.